afternoon everybody, JGM here. Recently a company, PhotoPro, saw my Sir Yui review and asked me if I would be interested in taking a look at one of their new tripods. Of course I said yes, I'm always eager to get my hands on the latest and greatest gear, test it out, see if it works, see if it doesn't work, see what it works for, it might not work for everything. So now we're going to dig into the PhotoPro UFO 2 tripod. Please note that this is not a paid endorsement. They did contact me and send me the tripod for free, but they are not paying me or asking me to say anything positive about their product. When I received the Photo Pro UFO 2 tripod, inside the box it came with a GoPro mount, a cell phone mount with two points of connection, and it also included a Bluetooth shutter release trigger. So this is the Photo Pro UFO 2 tripod. The price point is $18.99 USD on Amazon. I believe it's right around 20 pounds international for the UK. It comes equipped with these locking, can you hear that? You can hear when the legs kind of lock out in a place. Now it's not something that you can't easily pull back in, but I like that little bit of a little bit of lock it makes me feel like it's gonna be a little more sturdy it also has a just a standard one inch ball lockable with a plastic cuff and a quarter inch screw base plate and this piece of the base plate is adjustable so if you have a camera with a shallower point of contact you can actually screw the camera on nice and tight you don't have to worry about any wiggle or any gap now this type of mount I have a love-hate relationship with. Let me start with the hate relationship. On my larger cameras, such as my Sony a6500, I like to keep the base plate on the camera all the time. So when it's in my bag, it's constantly on the camera. When I take the camera out of the bag and I go to use something like my Sir Yui tripod, I can easily just attach it and then I'm ready to just go and vlog. But then when I wanna go downstairs and do something like a talking head, I can take the camera directly off the Sir Yui and put it right on my newer year tripod. And then I'm talking just like this. Something like this, it doesn't have a detachable base plate. So I'm always going to have to carry it on an Allen key or a coin if I wanna put the base plate back onto the bottom of the Sony or my Canon camera so I can attach it to something else like a full size tripod. Now the love relationship comes from something like this. Using something like my Canon G7X, the point and shoot, this thing is perfect for. Because no matter what you do, the battery door is not going to open with the tripod base on. So no matter what you do, when you have to change the battery in this camera, you always have to take the base plate off. Now again, with something like my Sony that the base plate's always attached to, this, I need to carry around an Allen key or a coin constantly so I can take the base plate back off just so I can change the battery or take the memory card out of this camera. Then it's cumbersome. I have to put it back on when I'm done and ready to use it. And if you're like me, you go through two or three batteries a day when you're vlogging on something like this. So that's a constant pain. But this, you pop it off. You could take your battery or memory card out, put the door back on, and then screw the tripod right back on. Make sure you're tight and you're ready to go. So for something like a point and shoot, this is like the absolute dream of a tripod mount. Now for this review, I used three different cameras and this is the order I tested them in. Canon G7X Mark I, Sony a6500 with a 16 to 70 millimeter lens, and a Canon 70D with a 10 to 18 f4 lens. Now the max load for this tripod is 800 grams and on the Amazon page, they picture a Canon 6D with the older style 50 millimeter lens on this tripod. So I went through and I added up the weights of all of the cameras. I took all of these specs directly from B&H or KEH to the Canon 6D, body only weighing 685 grams. The older style Canon 50 millimeter lens weighs 130 grams. The battery for that camera is 79.4 grams and the SD card weighs roughly two grams. 
that's a total of 894.4 grams. That's without the Rode mic. That weighs 85 grams, plus the 9 volt battery for the mic is another 45 grams. That brings our total up to 1024.4 grams. That would be a standard vlogging setup and that is well over the max load for this tripod. The Canon G7X weighs 320 grams and that's with a battery and memory card. The Sony A6500 weighs 453 grams with memory card and battery. The Sony 16-70mm f4 lens weighs 308 grams. We add the Rode VideoMic Pro and the 9 volt battery. That brings us up to a grand total of 891 grams. I would call that the acceptable range of max load for this tripod. Now, the Canon 70D. It weighs in at 753 grams with memory card and battery. The Canon 10-18 f4 lens is 240 grams. We add the Rode VideoMic Pro and the 9 volt battery, bringing us to a grand total of 1,124 grams. So doing that math, that tells us that really the only cameras that this tripod can accommodate are something like the Canon G7X. So really any point and shoot camera. So the G7X, the G7X Mark II, the Sony RX100, which is a very popular vlogging camera, or your smaller mirrorless cameras with a, a fairly decent lens. Other than that, your larger full frame DSLRs or your larger crop sensor bodies, it's gonna be a little bit too heavy for. But let's talk about my experiences using this tripod with each of these cameras. Starting with the G7X. This tripod can 100% handle anything like this. It was very comfortable, very easy, very, very light. So if you're walking around vlogging like this all day long, this setup is extremely comfortable. Both the camera and tripod are so light, so comfortable in the hand. I'm gonna have zero problems walking around like this all day long vlogging to the camera. I spent several days with this setup, and again, I had zero issues. This was very comfortable. I could throw this in a backpack. I could throw this in my back pocket. I could throw this in my front pocket. I was good to go. Half the time, I forgot that I had this stuff with me. Next, I tested this setup with the addition of the Rode VideoMic Pro, but I'm using that to film right now. And again, this was a very light setup. I had zero issues with this. It's a little bit heavier, but that's because of the camera, not the tripod. Again, a very good grip. I didn't have any worries about me dropping or slipping this out of my hand. The only issues came when I was trying to make some micro adjustments to this camera because the plastic cuff doesn't exactly lock this down. So it's okay, but I would say sometimes it would dive just a little bit on me because the lens is longer, so it's gonna be a little bit more front heavy. Even if you try to set it up with the leg in front, you're still gonna get a little bit of dive, but not bad at all. I tested this setup for several days. I had zero problems. Again, very comfortable in the hand, can walk around, can vlog, can talk to the camera, can set it down, can set it up. Worked out great. And lastly, I tested out this setup, the Canon 70D with the Rode VideoMic 2 Pro on top. Now, the math before tells me I'm over 300 grams above the max load, and it definitely showed. Myself and others have a tendency to just set the camera down quickly if I just need to use my hands to do something. And the problem there is when you pick this setup back up, this happens. As you can see, the cuff is completely tight. It's just too much weight for the top of this tripod. Now I'm doing my best right now to keep my hand and wrist locked directly below the camera so I'm not getting that dip because it was just seriously just hardcore 90 degrees jackknifing cameras going down. Now if I find move around a little bit, I can kind of feel it giving, but right now it's staying pretty sturdy. So vlogging with this setup wouldn't work for me. I wouldn't really recommend anything from like a T6i up because it's just gonna be too heavy for the max load of this tripod. You'll probably be okay for a little while, but after a few months, I think everything's gonna kinda loosen up and settle in, and you're gonna have a lot more of that dipping action that's gonna happen, and it's not gonna be good. You're, you're gonna be trying to vlog or trying to film something, and the camera's just gonna dip. Try to get something a little bit more robust. Now, the tripod itself, I compared the use of this tripod against my Suyui 3T35K, and the largest of the Gorilla Pods. I would say this is definitely overkill and the comparison between these two 
it's, it's, it's not there. There is a gorilla pod between the smallest and the biggest that would be very, very close to this tripod. So I did take that in consideration against this. I used to have one, but it, it long since broke and it's been thrown out. So I can attest to the durability of this, the medium sized gorilla pod, but I didn't use that in comparison directly for this review because I got rid of it probably six or eight months ago. Now, firstly, compared to the Sir Yui, I mean, there's not much of a comparison between these two because this is a flexible tripod where the Sir Yui is not. It opens up and it extends. That's really the extent of this tripod. So I'm gonna kind of factor this one out for this review and I'm gonna focus more on the Gorilla Pod. Now, again, not a direct comparison with the larger Gorilla Pod with the focus head, but something like these Gorilla Pods, you don't have nearly as much flex. Yes, you get a lot out of this, but these things, you can see right here, you can literally wrap this all the way around and it will keep going. The UFO 2 is great if you're gonna try to do a time lapse on a really thin fence. You can really wrap this thing around upon itself to get a great grip and really you can put it in the weirdest locations and get the craziest angles because unlike the Gorilla Pod, that's the max wrap, the UFO 2 will really wrap around even upon itself to get the grip that you need to hold your camera. Once you have the Gorilla Pod kinda messed up, these things are a pain to get straight again. Granted, this is the larger aluminum one, so it's a little bit more stiff, but to get these things back into place is a pain. You really gotta work at it, you gotta separate them, pull them all straight, and squeeze them, where with the UFO 2, you kinda just squeeze it a few times and it goes back into place. Another issue, and I'll show you with the little one, is with some of these Gorilla Pods, is eventually the legs pop right out. And usually when that happens, it cracks along the edge here, and even when you put it back in, it's still gonna pop back out very easily. And each of these is a little joint, and over time, they just, they lose their ability to really stay. See, there's one or two that'll kinda stick, but over time they get really loose, and you get that camera dive again. So you'll have your camera set up, and it's just gonna pop right over, and you're gonna totally lose the shot. Well, this does not have the joints, so you can really bend this all the way around, and you keep bending it, and it's not gonna tip over like the Gorilla Pod because it doesn't have those joints. The comfort in holding this tripod when you're vlogging is amazing. The awesome part about this is it's super comfortable in the hand. I'm vlogging with it, spinning, turning. I got a really good grip on it. The tripod itself is nice and light, and really, it feels sturdy in my hand. It's actually squishy. So if you really gotta grip it for some reason, if you're like holding your hand out your car or you're trying to do an upside down shot and you're kind of worried you're gonna drop your camera and you got that death grip, it actually gives a little bit. It's really, really comfortable in the hand. Unlike these Gorilla Pods that, I mean, you can kind of wrap your fingers around them and get a grip, but when you're doing so, all of these rubber joints, they're kind of inside, they're digging into the palm of your hand. So when you're gripping this, you're, you're pushing the, the spines of one of the other legs into your hand, whether it's the back of your fingers or the palm of your hand, it's not that comfortable. So in conclusion, is this tripod worth $18.99 of your money? If you're using a DSLR, full frame, or a larger crop sensor body, no, it's not worth your $18.99. You're gonna need something a little bit more robust. It's just not gonna handle the weight of the camera. And if you put a larger lens on this, you're done. It's absolutely gonna tip over. If you're shooting with a smaller mirrorless, like some of the Sony A6000 series, yes, this tripod is absolutely worth your $18.99. It's going to hold and handle this weight, no problem. Now my highest recommendation for this tripod is if you are a point and shoot user, using something, again, like a G7X, a G7X Mark II, a Sony RX100, any of these cameras, this, this is 100%, 100% the tripod 
for you. I used to buy these mini Gorilla Pods and honestly, I loved them. These things are like 15 to 20 bucks a pop. Look, it didn't even do anything, it fell apart. I bought like six of these. I spent like $120 on these things. Junk. This is a mini Gorilla Pod destroyer. This thing right here on this camera, again, pop it on, pop it off. You can get your memory card, you get your batteries changed. This is great. There's nothing, there's no wiggle in here. And I've been using this thing pretty rough. I was not gentle on this tripod at all. And look, it still looks like it's practically brand new. I mean, you can see a little bit of the, the movement in the legs because they're, that was wrapping around tiny things, but this thing is solid. So if you are a point and shoot user and you're looking for the ultimate tripod, definitely pick up a Photo Pro UFO2 tripod. This thing is great. I wish they had this around and I knew about this over a year ago. I would have bought probably one of these and been fine. $18.99. And Photo Pro was nice enough to share with you, my viewers, a 10% discount code down in the description below. So really, you can get this thing for like 17 bucks. 17 bucks. This is definitely a great buy. So there you go, my honest review of the Photo Pro UFO 2 tripod. If you like this review or any of my other videos, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And make sure you ring that bell so you get notifications the next time I post a brand new video. Good night. <music>